think there was another question over there. I just wanted to check if there are any experiences in terms of um, self-regulatory self standards, like where industry come together as an association and they agree on particular standards to follow because the experience in my country still in South Africa is that industry is crying out for government to provide policy directive in terms of standardization. It's just that government, we tend to move very slow in terms of developing those regulated standards. And I don't know whether there are any experience in self-regulation. Um, there are a lot of standards around. I could mention a few that are started from brands and buyers in the US. So the most recent one is from the Outdoor Industry Association, where they have something called an eco-index, um, a, a way to measure how green a product is from the design phase all the way to the end of life. So it's a whole product life cycle. And you have other big companies like Walmart, which have uh, started their sustainability index about one or two years ago. You have other efforts. Um, I also hear from Hong Kong also doing something like that. So there is a, for manufacturer like us, I'm, I don't know which one I should look at. So there is some effort of trying to get more of the brands together, both from the US and from the European side. Um, so it's, it's ongoing. And you could imagine that everybody liked the bucket of sand and the bucket of water. <laughs> they will have different uh, views on how, which type, of, whether, which type of packaging is better than another type, which type of cotton to use versus another. So there's still a lot of effort on that going on. I think there were some questions over there. Hi, my, my question is for Delman and Stanley. Could you please uh, identify yourself? Uh, Thomas Tang from Acom. Um, my question is for Delman and Stanley from, from an industry perspective. Uh, Delman, you mentioned that uh, one person in six in the US is wearing one of your shirts. And Stanley, you probably have another two or three more people wearing your shirts. <laughs> um, my question really is that, that um, you talk about recycling. Um, have you thought about taking these shirts back? and closing the loop on this, because it's an awful lot of shirts that you're making, and they're all going out into landfills and various other disposal kind of facilities. Uh, within the industry, you know, have, have you ever considered that? Um, the, the, the best known retailer known for doing that is Patagonia in the US, where if you go into even the Patagonia shop in Hong Kong, there's a, a bin where you can recycle all your polyester, uh, 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 secondhand stuff that you don't want, and they have actually built a whole reverse supply chain to handle all the polyester. Yeah, but Patagonia, if you, if you like, is, is a very isolated case. I mean, we're talking about a whole industry in China which is supplying the rest of the world with textiles. Uh, if, if the industry uh, where um, uh, you, you both represent actually did that, I mean, you could imagine the, the immense scale that would take place there. I mean, is, is there any sign of this in any form? The, there is some sign, actually, about a year and a half ago, some company it's actually related to what Stanley Cedar is saying, the whole recycling infrastructure. Not, don't, don't just think about the uh, end-of-life consumer uh, uh, clothes, but actually even within the manufacturing uh, 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 industry, there are a lot of ways that we can recycle. Um, we actually did a pilot with a, 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 a mill in Hong Kong where we took our scrap, uh, blasted white, white scraps, blasted, and then they actually made it into a denim jeans fabric with 30% content recycle with, with no uh, perceivable difference. But to set up the whole recycling infrastructure, I've seen some company in the US trying to do it, um, but has not been successful yet. So yeah. maybe, well, maybe yeah. Stanley? Add to, uh, what, uh, uh, I can perhaps add to what Delman's saying. Uh, definitely, there are some efforts on the manufacturing side about uh, using, using the waste, uh, wastage, the scraps, and make it into new fabric again. But uh, we, there isn't really much effort to do it at the you know, end of the, the product of the consumer. And I suspect the reason is uh, economically it's not viable. Because uh, well, now we're doing it at the manufacturing side, it's just about viable that we can use this, the scrap, which doesn't really cost anything, and it's already located in China, to basically recycle it into new fabric. So just about, you know, it, it, economically it could work. But if that piece of, you know, if that, if that shirt is now in the US, and you have to bring it all, you have to collect it using very expensive Western labor to collect it, and then, you know, sort it out, 
send it back to Asia for manufacturing. And, and that's before, and, and actually before manufacturing, you gotta break that down, the cotton, the polyester, whatever, into the fiber, and then remake the, 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 the thing. I, I suspect you know, nobody's talked about it because e economically it's not uh, really but viable. You could, but you could open a factory in the US to do that. Then you wouldn't have to transport that back. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you get our customers to pay us uh, <laughs> the right prices, well, we'll that's do what anything, the US <laughs> want. You know, that's what they're hoping for, that China will start to own factories in, Ch in the US, right. don't they? Um, but I have a serious question. <laughs> These are people from cities. And city cities t tend to think of themselves as procurers of trains, of streets, of, of hospital buildings, of schools, and so on. But they also procure garments, like police uh, shirts of the police or hospital um, apparel for hospitals. There's a lot of, a lot of cloth that they're buying every day. Do you think that uh, the demand side from the public sector could make a, a difference in this field? Do you feel that too? Is there any consortium of cities or of, of uh, public sector demand that would uh, steer a little bit uh, in the right direction? Well, the, I mean, I don't know about uh, Delman's business, but with our business, the, the demand from the public sector is basically you know, zero. Uh, I guess if you look at it globally, you know, what's the, in, in apparel, what's the percentage uh, that is uh, from the government or the public sector, I suspect it's still a pretty small, you know, governments don't buy the high price. Uh, don't buy LV, a Calvin Klein, you know, no. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, in terms of dollars spent, uh, I suspect it's still a pretty low uh, percentage. So just having the government say, I, I want this made in, you know, with eco fiber or whatever, uh, probably won't make that much of a difference. U.S. Army, maybe? Uh, yeah, that's, I guess it's possible. But, uh, you know, that's, you know, I don't know. What, Devin, what do you think? Good business opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do provide actually for a, a, a uniform uh, company in the US and also one that produces for uh, law enforcement. So it, it's a good market. Okay. So th th they could drive a little in the right direction if yes. they want. Okay, with that I would like to thank our panel very much uh, for the first round and uh, give them a big hand. I think that's uh, what they deserve. Thank you very much for your appearance and for your support of our discussion and for the open discussion that we could have.